Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and this coming week I'm going to be leading a one-shot of Easy D6 for a fundraiser that I'm having. And most of the players at my table are brand new. They've never played a game before. So I figured I'd go through and explain to them the roles of the game. Let's roll it. So if you are aware of the normal terminology for tabletop role-playing games, you realize that a D6 is just one of those normal six-sided dice that you find inside most board games. So easy D6, you can literally pick up, raid your Monopoly set, raid another game like Clue, and grab all the six-sided die that you can, and off you go to play because you have the tools that you need. It's a very simple way of doing it, hence the term EZ. And the basic role for Easy D6 works like this. You have a target number that is going to be lower or higher depending on the difficulty. That's very simple to understand. And you're going to roll a die. And if you equal the target number or exceed it, then you succeed at whatever task you are trying to do. And the tasks that you try to do are completely up to you as a player. There's nothing on the sheet that's telling you that you can't do this, but you can do this. If you imagine that your character is going to try to do something, you can do it. It's part of the fun and the charm of the game. Now, when you roll that die, there are two things that happen. A six will automatically succeed. So if you roll a six, you're golden. You can move on to the next step. But a one, that's an automatic failure. There's no way to adjust it. The first way that you can augment or hinder your rolls is through the use of things called boons and banes. A boon is for something that you are particularly skilled at, if you're trained at it specifically, or that you grew up doing this and so it's just part of who you are. Or maybe you have a piece of equipment that makes you better at something than you would be naturally. Then you get to roll 2d6, but you take the higher of the two numbers. And if that number meets or exceeds the target number, then you succeed. And a bane works the exact opposite. If your character spent their lives in a library and hasn't been out in the wilderness, well, maybe they haven't built up the muscles that they need to do close combat. And so they incur something called a bane. They're going to roll 2d6 as well, but you take the lower number. And if that lower number meets or exceeds the target number, then you're going to succeed. There's other ways to adjust the results, though. And the first of these is with karma. Karma is a really cool resource in the game. Most characters start with three at the beginning of a session. Some characters might start with a little more, depending on how they develop their character. And the way that karma works is that for every karma point you spend, you can adjust your die roll by one. So say that you really need to do a task. You need to convince this guard to let you into the locked city in order to save your patron who has assassins now prowling the streets. But the guard doesn't quite trust you. And so it's going to be a five to succeed in that roll. But you're going to do it with a bane because they're on their guard. And you roll your dice and you get a four with the lower die. Well, you're going to fail. Your patron's going to die because the assassins are in the keep. What are you going to do? Ah, I have five karma points. I'm going to spend a karma point And now we are golden. We can get into the city and go try to save our patron. Now you can get more karma as you play because every time you fail a roll, you're going to get a new karma point that you can save to spend for later. And that's a really fun way to play because karma is one of the key resources that you need to keep track of in order to keep your character moving forward. Do you spend karma to succeed at a task or do you get a new karma point because you get the big boss coming up and you might need that to succeed in the fight? That's the decision that you're going to have to make. But there are going to be times where karma is not going to be worthwhile. Uh, the cave completely collapses on you, or you roll a one on your check and you're not allowed to add karma to it. It's an automatic failure. What do you do then? Well, the characters in Easy D6 have another way to get out of a bad roll, and this is called hero dice. This is the last option that a hero inside Easy D6 has to overcome bad luck. It's that last 
gasp that they can just reach up and maybe grab a root as they go over the edge the way that you do in some adventure movies, right? Indiana Jones is just hanging by a thread after everybody thinks that he's died. With a hero die, you can re-roll a one. Roll that die, and if you meet or exceed the target number, suddenly your failure and maybe leading to your death has become a success. It's a really cool idea. And you can actually regain your hero dice by spending a certain amount of karma during the game. So if you want that last gasp of hope to be part of your character moving forward, that's a way to do it. Combat uses the same basic mechanics. Each creature has a target number to hit, and if you meet or exceed it, you do damage to the creature. And so if you roll your dice, and say you have a boon or a bane in melee combat, which is hand-to-hand -hand combat or ranged combat, like with bows or with daggers or with crossbows, and you're going to roll your boon or your bane. Creatures also have a certain number of strikes. Your characters will start pretty much with three strikes, and that's it. Three strikes, and they are out. Creatures will have a little bit more damage that they can take before they go down. But there's another cool thing inside Easy D6 that makes combat really messy, dynamic, and awesome. There is a crit roll. If you roll a six on your dice, you do a strike of damage, but then you get to do something that is called confirming the crit. You get to re-roll a die, single die. If you get another six, you do another strike of damage and you get to re-roll again. And the cool thing about confirming a crit is if you have a bunch of karma saved up and say you roll a four, but you really want to do another strike of damage, I'm going to take two karma points, put it up to a six. I do a second strike of damage and now I'm going to roll again. And that's a lot of fun. I have seen first time players take out dragons because they had enough karma stored up and they had enough good rolls that they just devastated this large creature in essentially three rounds of combat. It was rather impressive. And the whole table cheering confirm it confirm it do it again it's a lot of fun for you as players you have armor types uh, light or heavy or medium and that is going to change what you need to do to save from taking damage for a creature to attack you they need to roll a three or greater if they do that you get a strike of damage but you have this armor save number so say you're a character who's wearing medium armor. It doesn't matter what type it is. It's just called medium armor in this game. It's easy. And as a medium armor character, you get to roll a die. And if you get five or higher, you are going to not take that strike. So it's a you parry or your shield comes up or you dodge out of the way. And what normally would have hit you suddenly is a mess. And with this as well, you're able to use karma to save yourself from taking a strike. If it's your last strike, it's your last gasp, and you uh, roll a four, but you need a five, take that last karma point, and suddenly you are saved. You're able to fight on for another round of combat. That's a really cool thing. Again, your hero die can come in here as well, because if your armor save rolls a one, you can't use karma to adjust it. So you get your hero die and you say, I need to survive and I'm going to roll and I'm going to see if I actually beat that armor save so that I can live to fight on another round. Combat is really cool. It's really fast and it's a lot, a lot of fun. And when you throw karma into the mix and the danger of armor saves, everybody is just on their seat trying to figure out, can we get to the next round? Can we defeat these creatures and survive to get to the next fight? It's a lot of fun. Some damage is not going to come from weapons or normal weapons. If you are 30 feet from the edge of the cavern when it, the ceiling is collapsing and you're going to try to run out of this place and you don't quite make it. You have to roll a miraculous save, usually a six. And if you succeed, again, you may use karma, uh, you will survive the ordeal, but you only have one strike left. Whether you suddenly dodge out of the cavern at the last minute, uh, limping because something has shredded up your leg or because the walls fall in on you and you manage to survive in a small pocket that you then dig yourself out of. That's a miraculous save. And they're all over the place in old adventure movies and all those old reels that like Indiana Jones was based off of. This is where that concept comes into play inside Easy D6. So there might be a time when something gets thrown at you. The avalanche is coming down the mountain and you can't dodge it, roll your miraculous save. 
If you succeed, you live. If you fail, well, goodbye character. But the good thing is, is you're able to use karma or your hero die if you end up rolling a one. One thing that adventure fantasy games are known for is for people who are running around casting spells. And this is also true for Easy D6, but it's a little bit different. In a lot of other games, you have list of spells with all their effects and how long they last, and what level you have to be to cast it, and how many you can cast during a day. And Easy D6 has none of that. It has a class called a conjurer, which is essentially a magic user or a wizard in some other game. And they all come from their own different schools. Some of them are botanicalists and they're able to make plants grow. Others of them have magical tendrils that lash out from them and are able to grab onto things or strike people for damage and do all sorts of weird stuff. All the different schools have their own different flavor. But when you cast a spell, you get to describe what it is that you're doing and what it is that you are trying to accomplish. And you get to roll to see if it succeeds. There are a couple ways that this works. The first is you need a resistance number because everything comes off of a target number inside Easy D6. And most creatures will have maybe one resistance die for magic that they'll roll, and that'll be the number that they have to beat or meet. If it's a one, the spell automatically succeeds. Some larger creatures like dragons will have a larger pull of dice that they get to roll to determine what their target number is. And so that's going to increase the likelihood that the number is going to be higher rather than lower. The conjurer then has to determine what power level they are going to cast the spell at. One, two, or three, which means they're going to roll one die, two die, or three dice. And you would think at first glance that you're just going to roll three dice all the time because, of course, I want to be able to get the higher number. But here's the thing with raising the power level of your spell. Any one makes the spell completely fizzle. It's just pssst, out and it's done. It does not succeed. This is a big deal if it's a moment of life or death. If you're trying to use your magic tendrils to climb out of the way of a stampeding rhino and you're just going to die, you really need to succeed. And that one, that's dangerous. That's a little bit rough. So what happens when you cast a spell is always the resistance die is rolled first. So you have to see what number it is that you need to beat, and then you get to determine what level you're going to cast at. It's kind of fun. If your spell does fail and it is a matter of life or death, there are two ways to turn a failure into success because you're not allowed to use karma to adjust a spell. The first of those is to do spell burn. Uh, you just take an immediate strike of damage to your character. That's put you one third of the way toward death. And suddenly the spell will succeed. So if you're in a moment of certain death or life and taking one strike instead of dying, that's a pretty good trade-off. And the other way is to use your hero die. Remember, a hero die can re-roll any one. So if you are having a problem and you're going to die and you don't want to take spell burn because you've already taken two strikes of damage, well, that hero die is your last gasp of hope. It's a really cool feature. I want people to start using more. So that's great for magic, but what about people of faith? Do they appear inside Easy D6 as well? And they do. There is a class or a hero path that's very similar to a cleric in some of the other RPG games. It's called a friar, and they have certain abilities that they have just part of their class. But if they want to call down a miracle, you have to have a specific inclination applied to your character, which is called devout. But here's the thing. The deities inside Easy D6 are not easy to contact. They might be a little bit lazy. And so when you roll for a miracle, it's going to call for a number of aloof dice to be rolled against the miracle prayer. And depending on how important or huge the miracle is or how simple the miracle is, your aloof dice can be anywhere from one die all the way up to six dice. So if you just want to be able to have a miraculous ability to track where the kidnapped compatriot was taken, maybe that's a one because your tracker failed and you just need to call on the deity one aloof dice. That's what you're going to need to beat. And if it rolls a one, it automatically succeeds as a prayer. If somebody goes down and you want them to be raised from the dead, well, then that's going to be six dice, which almost guarantees that you're going to have one six in there that you need to beat. Same way with magic, you're going to determine the 
earnestness of your prayer for a miracle, one die, two, three dice. And if you roll those dice and a one comes up, well, the miracle fizzles. It doesn't happen. But if you meet or exceed that target number, then the miracle happens. It's kind of fun. And just like with magic, there is a way to get around a failed roll, although it's not as automatic as it is with magic. You can offer a sacrifice. It has to be something important. You can't say something that's kind of vague, like, well, I'm going to dedicate myself to just helping people. That's not a sacrifice. That's just what you're supposed to do. But if you have like a healing potion on you, that you're really holding on to because you think you're going to die in the upcoming fight. And you say, this is so important that I am going to give up my healing potion to you. Then you're able to re-roll all your earnestness dice. Not just one, all of them. But again, a one comes up. You have to accept that result. So miracles should be hard in this game. But when they happen, it's going to be really cool. And that's it. Those are the roles of the game, pretty much. If you know those roles, you can play. And if you don't know those roles, it's easy enough to pick up when you're at the table. Just say, roll these dice and take the higher number. Roll these dice and take the lower number. You rolled a one. How do you want to try to get around this? Or are you just going to take the failure? Easy D6 is fast. It is furious. It is just complete mayhem. And it's a lot of fun to play and even more fun for me to run. So for folks who are going to be at my table next weekend, I'm looking forward to having you there, and I hope we have an awesome time. For folks who are regular viewers of the channel, I am still working on my review of Open Legend. I'm going to go through and read the book a little bit more to solidify my video review of it, and that should be a lot of fun. It's a cool game, and I can't wait to share it with all of you. Until we meet again, folks, happy playing, everyone.